Pilipinas at makialam. Vote Pilipinas para sa kinabukasan ng bawat isa. May palanagutan, alay natin para sa bayan. Ang boses mo'y gamitin, karapatan ang kinin. Heto na ang pagkatatao para makibahagi ang boto mo. Pasok mga lahat. Sun sa panahon ng pandemya, kawalan ng trabaho, gera. Ngayon, higit kailanman, napakahalagang suriin ang susunod na mamumuno sa ating bansa. Sino ang may totoong solusyon? Sino ang may konkretong plano? Sino ang tapat na maglilingkod? Kasama ninyo ang Commission on Election sa pagpantay at pagkilatis sa mga susunod na leader ng ating bansa. Dito ninyo malalaman, Pilipinas Debates 2022, The Turning Point. Simulcast live nationwide and worldwide.
March 19, Sabado, the presidential debate. March 20, Linggo, the vice presidential debate. April 3, Linggo, ang ikalawang presidential debate. April 23, Sabado, the vice presidential town hall debate. At April 24, Linggo, the presidential town hall debate. Kilalanin natin mabuti ang mga kandidato sa pagkapangulo at pangalawang pangulo dito sa pinakamalaki at opisyal na serye ng debate. Pilipinas Debates 2022, The Turning Point. To our audiences joining us via Zoom, Facebook Live, and YouTube, thank you so much for being with us today. I am your host, Matt Matias, and welcoming you to the Hashtag Bumotoka webinar series powered by Smart and Rakuten Viber. This series is a part of the entire Hashtag Bumotoka campaign, together with other initiatives such as the Candidate Profile Dashboard and the Presidential and Vice Presidential Debates. The COVID-19 pandemic changed the world in ways we are just beginning to recognize. As the pandemic forced the world to go into prolonged lockdowns, many lost their jobs and struggled with the online setup and uncertainty of it all. Now, the Philippine Statistics Authority reported that poverty incidents in the country rose to a whopping 23.7% during the first half of 2021 alone from 21.1% in 2018. This translates to 3.9 million more Filipinos living in poverty. This is a huge blow to poverty reduction efforts in recent years. While the unemployment rate decreased from 17.7% .7 in 2020 to 6.5 in 2021, this still refers to 3.27 million Filipinos without jobs. There is still a lot to be done to help Filipinos succeed amid the pandemic. An effective government needs exceptional leaders that will use our country's resources to its maximum capacity, which is why we're inviting each and every one of you to join the call and say hashtag bumoto ka para sa kabuhayan. Now, to help us unpack these issues, I am very, very honored uh, to be joined by these amazing people live on this call. We are very to have distinguished guests with us today. I'm honored to introduce to you our first one. Now, the first member of the panel has been working in the development sector for 12 years, assuming various roles as social entrepreneur, government consultant, lecturer in enterprise development, and a program development manager. He is currently working as the entrepreneurship and incubation manager of PhilTech Foundation, enabling social enterprises and startup development. He is also the co-founder and lead consultant of Strago Solutions Consulting Working with over 80 clients coming both the public and the private sectors, focusing on development, sustainability, and management. Friends, help me welcome Kevin Martin de la Cruz. Sir Kev, come say hi to our friends online. Hello, a pleasant afternoon, everyone. Okay, so thank you, Matt, for the intro generous introduction. And it's an honor to be here. Today. Honors hours, Sir Kev. Yeah. Can't wait to hop on in to our conversation in a bit. But before that, I'm going to introduce to everyone our second member of the panel is the president of the Minimal Government Thinkers, a free market think tank and NGO in the Philippines. He is also a columnist, a published author, and an economist. He has written two books. Number one, Health Choices and Responsibilities in 2011, published by Central Book Supply Manila, and Liberalism, Rule of Law and Civil Society in 2014, published by the Frederick Newman Foundation for Freedom Philippines Office. Before writing for Business World, he was a columnist of uh, Interaction, Fat Free Economics from March 2012 to July 2014. And prior to that, he was also a columnist of The Lobbyist, Back to Personal Responsibility from May 2008 to August 2014. Friends, help me welcome Sir Bienvenido Nonoy Oplas Jr. Sir Noy, good afternoon to you. 
Ah, Ernoy, I think you're muted. Ayan. Yeah, good there we go, Sir Noy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Now, just, yes, yeah, Sir Noy. Uh, now, let me just ask you both, are you ready to hop on in this conversation with me? Give me a thumbs up if you are. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Kevin. Sir Noy. Now, I don't want to waste time. Gusto ko nang tumulon sa conversation. First questions first. Now, I think this question is for you both. What was the role of entrepreneurship and uh, MSME during the pandemic? And what about now that we're undergoing a post-pandemic economic recovery? Now, I would like to address this question to Sir Kev first because I know you have a lot of extensive work on entrepreneurship and social impact. Go ahead, Sir Kev. Okay, so uh, good afternoon again, everyone. So for the uh, past note, Two years, no, two and a half years of the pandemic. No, we in Philippine Development Foundation and even myself, no, as a consultant, uh, we've been supporting enterprises um, in transitioning, no, from uh, from being in the survival mode, quote unquote, right. to the thriving mode. And actually, anyway, almost eighty percent, no, of uh, based on our survey, no, eighty percent of MSMEs around the Philippines, even startups, no, have uh, severe decrease in terms of revenue potential and uh, it was in the first um, six months wherein they felt much pressure no uh, when it comes to uh, how will they pivot to digital mm -hmm. how will they um, make sure that their supply chain will be will be made will be streamlined so that they can generate no uh, more products to the market how can they even reach the market so during that time everyone is struggling everyone is trying to pivot but when the uh, alternative no enterprises came. We're talking about e-commerce. We're talking about um, uh, digital services. Okay, um, the, these nature of startups no were the ones that actually helped no the the to open up a new um, way, new ways, no new avenues to engage the market. So, for example, no before no there was a struggle in agriculture produce na karamihan sa ating mga kababayan na nasa iba't ibang provinces no especially in the northern regions in Luzon no nahihirapan in bringing down the agriculture goods so there's this um, startup no that actually helped no these uh, um and agriculture ventures no or even the farmers no to bring their stocks to Manila or to different areas around the Philippines so there so in a way no startups nagipit man sila during the first period no but eventually, you no, know, they were the ones who provided the solutions for other businesses to be able to thrive this pandemic. Yon. And another siguro no point is uh, other than support, no, they were able to um, address the needs of the clients. No, I mean, let's say um, mental health services. We're talking about making healthcare services attainable mm -hmm. for uh, for people. So dun po pasok yung um, other than the e-commerce, no, we're talking about um, e-insurances. We're talking right. about, mm -hmm. di ba, uh, all uh, mental health, telehealth, no, services, no. So talagang nagboom yung startups that really cater to personal wellness mm -hmm. and addressing the needs of the individuals. Na yun nga masabi nating na dom na 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 stuck na sa home, <laughs> di ba? During this period, yun. So napakalaki ng contribution ng startups, no, during this time. So there. Definitely, Sir Kevin, I can totally relate to what you said earlier because I'm from Northern Luzon myself. Yes. So I saw, and I worked at DTI before, so I saw really how MSME struggled to find their niche and pivot during this very, very hard time. I, I, I think we're talking about the same uh, startup. <laughs> is it Miami? <laughs> yes. I think it is. Nah, there we go. Now, uh, before I ask the same question to Sir Noy over here, I just want to ask Sir Kev because... Don't you think it's quite interesting, Sir Kevin, that despite the hell that the pandemic was or currently is, yes. and dami pa rin nating business registrations, and dami pa rin mga negosyo nagsisulputan from the get-go, uh, from the pandemic in 2020, the highest point in 2021. As a matter of fact, in 2020 alone, according to the Department of Trade and Industry, we saw almost a million business registrations, both renewals and new business registrations. Bakit ganto, Sir Kevin? How ironic is this? What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so during the pandemic, no, the office spaces might not 
open for businesses no but mm-hmm. the homes become their offices and siguro two things no um number one, there are people who got uh, laid off dahil nga nagkakaroon ng retrenchment no na naghahanap ng ways to to find alternative um uh, revenue stream and the alternative revenue stream no nagventure sila into yun nga small businesses no na located sa houses nila so let's say we're talking about food we're talking mm-hmm. about even the live selling we're talking about i mean there are many business entities that came up because um they might not be entrepreneurs before but because they were retrenched or nagkaroon mm-hmm. nag, na, sila mismo na apektuhan ng uh, ng pandemya no yung companies nila no ay yung companies ng mga i mean as an employee so they now are I don't know they risk this because this might be the only way no yes. to survive uh-huh. yon so yon so marami sa kanila yun nga nag-start na ng home-based businesses and uh, mm-hmm. yung iba naman um um other than that it's really yun nga uh, ang daming ideas na spark na nga no maybe um mm-hmm. there are uh, businesses that that can be that can be done at home yan so parang mm-hmm. ano ako mag people had the time to really think about uh, what venture to pursue to help um the gaps that this pandemic has has caused no mm-hmm. kasi di ba when you talk about entrepreneurship no it is an uh, it is a science no technically that um that creatively addresses problems yan mm-hmm. and and daming gaps no na nag-surface out na how to deliver food how to do this how to do that so maraming nag-take advantage yan so yon so two things no yun nga yung two things na yun. number one many people find this as a way to get revenue alternative mm-hmm. revenue number two maraming nag open up na gaps no na maaring sagutin ng startups mismo yeah. thank you sir Kev thank you for those beautiful thoughts I have to agree tamang tama kasi at that point siguro in the pandemic yun nalang siguro yung nakikita nilang chance to get themselves back up right and I'm sure sir Noy 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 over here would agree which is why I'd like to ask you the same question, Sir Noy. Um, going back to the fir- first question, what was the role of entrepreneurship and uh, our MSMEs during the pandemic? How important was their role during the pandemic? And uh, papaano po ngayon? Ano po ang role nila habang uh, umaakyat tayo? We're in a phase of post-pandemic economic recovery. How important are our MSMEs? Go ahead, Sir Noy. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh... I can can I can you possibly show my my slide? I prepared three three slides lang. I think that uh, that will be helpful for the discussion. Kasi yes. ang ginawa nangyari talaga what really happened is that um entrepreneurship was practically flattened, no? Right. So although we're talking about the pandemic here, but uh how come that the same pandemic that affected the Philippines affected uh Thailand, Vietnam, mm-hmm. America, Europe, etc has vastly different impact on the economy. You know? So the same virus mm-hmm. affecting the same the same planet, but the impact is very much different. So uh, this is from my, from my column last Tuesday. Uh, so remember, we have the lockdown in March 16, 2020. It was right. supposed to be a two weeks lockdown. Two weeks lang ito, ha, sabi nila, to flatten the curve. But what really happened is what it, it practically flattened the Philippine economy because in the whole of Asia, the Philippines was the worst performing country mm-hmm. in, in Asia. And in, in the top 50, I think we we're the fifth uh, worst performing economy. So our performance in 2020 of 9.6% was the worst since post-World War II. Worse than Marcelo, worse than the Pinatubo eruption, worse than the coup d'etat. It was the worst, no? So again, uh, ang basyan dito, for comparison, why you say that is the, the extent of lockdown and the extent of lockdown is measurable by the Google uh, COVID-19 Community Mobility Reports. No? So you have a baseline from January to February 2020, tapos compare mo yung percentage change no? compared to that baseline. Tapos pinakita ko dito in various countries. Ang lumalabas dito na economists that escape contraction, for instance, Taiwan and Vietnam, they have positive growth in 2020. Sila, nag-growth sila, tayo nag-contract because the extent of lockdown was only say in transit stations, halimbawa yung mga bus terminal, etc. Minus 13% ng sila tayo, minus 60%. So, ang, ang kwan dito na I think that 
uh, there's not nothing wrong with the entrepreneurship and initiatives. They want to be productive, they want to do business, but government has prevented them from being productive. Uh, slide number two, please. Uh, yun. Ito naman ang impact naman dito sa ekonomiya. Talagang ang grabe talaga. Kaliyapas ang abiyan ng baseline natin. Hindi sa Philippine Statistics Data, no? Philippine Statistics Authority PSA Data. So ang baseline natin, halimbawa, January 2020, before the lockdown, the unemployment rate was, uh, unemployed people were 2.4 uh, million after lockdown, April, from 2.4 million to, to 7.2 million people. Were, were jobless and unemployment rate uh, from 5.3 to 17.6 percent. Again, uh, so uh, I compared to January 2022, uh, then no back to more or less January 2020 level. So again, it's, uh, there was nothing wrong with the MSMEs. Our entrepreneurship, they're doing the great people, they're doing the heroic job of creating various goods and services to the consumers, but the government simply prevented them from being productive. Uh, I was stop that. Yeah. So, medyo ano, ang yung lesson talaga na um, may ang, I think that the ang bottom line siguro dito is, is for in, this, in this case, no, the, it's not sometimes the question is not what government should do, but it's not much more of what government should not do. Right. If people want to be productive, wag mo namang pigilan. Yeah. Awesome thoughts, Sir Noy. And uh, you touched on mobility kanina, Sir Noy. It's something I'm very, very interested in right now because I also have friends working in the transport sector, no, Sir Noy. Um, this is a question I want to ask both of you. Pero I'll go ahead and ask Sir Noy first. Sir Noy, um, what is the connection of mobility to the economy? Because the Philippines has had one of the longest, worst lockdowns in the entire world. How come we're still in the bottom of the food chain in terms of economy? Go ahead, sir. Uh, uh, yes, and aside from iba, yeah, directly to food, no? like, for instance, yung katulad ng mga gulay. Kasi ang lockdown kasi natin is not only within provinces, but also mm-hmm. within cities. And in fact, dito sa Makati sa amin, even within barangays, no? yung dati yung mga kalsada, interbarangay, nagsarahan ng gate. So if you're going to like, so if you're transferring say uh, pork products, uh, vegetable products from Binguet to ano, to Manila, marami checkpoint not only within provinces no like na pagdating mo ng Binguet pagdating pangkasan ng may checkpoint no. Although may sinabi ang gobyerno na dapat exempted yung ano exempted yung mga food. Pero yung sa unahan mo halimbawa kinuwestyon yung mga kotse. So mas ikaw nasa likod ka, titigil ka na rin. Langanan mang tsagasaan mo mga yon. So habang maraming checkpoint na gano, marami talaga natamaan. So I think among the among the main reason bakit tumaas ang inflation rate in the first few months of the lockdown, uh, of, oh yeah, of the lockdown, not only because of, uh, yun nga, mahirap, mahirap bumalaw yung mata, but ang um, production, but even the transportation of really uh, finished products or raw materials pag to the market, medyo mahirap din. Yung kaibigan ka, tiwala nga namin, may nasaraan ng taktura, ang bibili mo sa kabilang bayan. Pero ang pagdaan mo pa, para bilhin mo yung spare part para tumakbo yung traktura, na, ma, mabagal. Sa punta ka sa umaga, dapat makabalik ka ng tanghali. Makabalik ka ng hapon na sa dami ng checkpoint. So may, may epekto talaga yung mobility restriction doon sa ekonomi. So maski yung mga tao, gusto alibawa, nagde-deliver ka, kung minsan sa, sa kabilang barangay, titigilan, pipilan ka eh. Within the same city ha, Parang imagine kung boarding to the point of being irrational na yung lockdown natin at least from 2020. Uh, I had the chance to read your column also. And can I just say I'm a fan of your work? I am fanboying at this point in the conversation. But uh, Sir Noy, um, right, no, it, there is science to prove that uh, the mandatory stay-at-home policies were very ineffective in controlling the virus. Not just... Uh, it, just it did oh, that wasn't only successful in uplifting the economy, it was also very ineffective in controlling the virus. But at this point, I just want to ask Sir Kev, I understand Sir Kev that you work directly with uh, small businesses, uh, with these MSMEs. So Sir Kev, could you give me a story or uh, cite an example of a local entrepreneur or a startup in the Philippines that wanted to scale up or 
wanted to pivot pero was limited by the prolonged lockdowns here in the Philippines. Okay, so let me uh, actually go to the travel industry. No? Oh, yun yung talaga malaking effect nun. Um, mm-hmm. There's this, uh, uh, sige, if I may name them a mad travel. So make a difference travel. So they are actually a travel company that they they are bringing tourists uh, within the Philippines and even abroad no to different uh, what do you call it off the grid places no in uh, in Luzon and even I think uh, Sir Again. Kev is in the middle of Sir Kev can you hear me well now Yes 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 uh, there we go go ahead Sir Kev Okay all right, yon. So so basically, mad travel. No, they are they wanted to. They are at the point where in they have multiple partners uh, in different communities around the Philippines and about uh, community based enterprises, travel, uh, tourist spots. No, that are um, that are un- undiscovered. No, not really supported much. No, um, so they they connect with them. But yun nga, nung time na nagkaroon ng pandemic. No, um, they wanted to expand to new sites. Ayan, no? So they wanted to go to, let's say, Aurora, or they wanted to cater to more communities. But apparently, the pandemic stopped their entire operation for obvious reasons na yung mobility no, is a concern. I mean, travel is uh, banned. No? So what they what what uh, they did is to actually pivot. No? Na instead, na they are... I mean, actually, ito yung magandang pivot story because before they even achieve this pivot right now, uh, they were able to open what you call a mad market, meaning okay, what to do with the communities, no, the partners? How can you provide um possible livelihood or revenue source for them? Given na walang travel, uh, anaga avail ng travels nila, so they were able to um gather na yung goods nila, no. Ano yung mga local goods nyo na kailangan i promote? So they created a site. They create. They used harness social media so that they can actually promote these community goods. And while they're brainstorming, no. For new travel, uh, for to ways no on how they can um, bring their value to more clients no. So habang ginagawa nila yung mad market, na realize nila why not bring a virtual travel experience. Yeah, so ngayon hindi na sila mad travel ngayon sila yung mad online. Yeah, they're bringing these uh, experiences no to students who are in virtual classes right now around the world to to promote no Philippine um. Culture resource, uh, Philippine, um, the Philippine travel experience. No, they got get to talk to social entrepreneurs, even to members of the community. So in a way, no, they were able to pivot, but uh, yun nga no, nahira, parang meron silang plano, pero buti na lang talaga no, nag nag-drive sila, but yun. I mean, through um, nahirapan sila, pero they were able to overcome it. Yon. Mister Kev, is this a Filipino startup? Yes, this is a Filipino startup. Awesome, grabe yeah. napaka. You know, Filip- one thing about Filipino startups that separates us from the rest of the world that we're super ingenious. We will find resources. We will pivot. Now, I, this, this kind of reminds me, joking as kidding aside, uh, if you're in a public school, if you're from a public school, uh, this science planetariums used to go to your school and you enter this cove and uh, you see planets around, right? So it's like a virtual, it's an amazing virtual experience. And it's amazing that MAD has pivoted and found a niche to go into despite the pandemic. And now since we're touching on flights, <laughs> on uh, traveling, this is kind of a very heavy topic, Sir Noy, but this is what I want to ask you, especially because I know that this is your playground. This is your thing, Sir Noy. Um, how important is it, Sir Noy, that the people we elect on the Senate, on the Vice President, and uh, the presidential seat have an extensive background on economics, on international economics in specific. Because taking this context in a more global scene, because we have heard here says about how the Philippines shouldn't be meddling with international conflict, Sir Noy, no? And ang dahilan dito ay because, you know, international conflict has nothing to do with us. Hindi tayo kasali dyan, hindi tayo sasaw-saw. Pero ngayon nararamdaman natin that it actually does, no? Uh, it weighs heavily on us as well. So at this point, I want to ask you, Sir Noy, is it important for the next president or for the next um, set of people uh, to take sides in international conflict? And if we do, ano ang international, I sorry, ano ang economic implications nito para sa atin bilang bansa? 
Yeah, thanks, Matt. Uh, I think for the first question, whether we should take sides on the conflict, I think the answer is no. No, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually, if you look at it, the shooting war is actually limited to only two countries between Russia and Ukraine. It's the really mm -hmm. the economic war that affects so many countries, no? Like, for example, the economic sanctions of America uh, mm -hmm. affecting you know, uh, Russia, like, for instance, okay, right. you cannot, you have $300 billion of reserve by the central bank, you cannot touch it anymore. So, kung ako ng Russia, um, uh, Russia is the number one exporter in the world of gas, uh, second or third exporter of, 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 of oil, and third biggest exporter of coal, etc. So, if you're not going to pay me, if you want to pay me for my export, then I will not sell you. And that is mm -hmm. that explains bakit ang taas ng presyo ng oil and gas and coal and even wheat products, no? because we, Ukraine and Russia, they, are, they supply about 25% of the total exports of wheat. So para mahal yung wheat, some countries they ship to corn and some even ship to rice because wheat is food. Pag mahal naman yung corn, edi eh, sa atin, magmamahal yung, yung feeds, no? like chicken and, and, and pork. Magmamahal yung pagkain natin. So mas hindi tayo kasali dun sa gera, shooting war. Ang direksa tayo at direksa sa economic war. So yun talaga ang problema natin. So, you say, so first question, whether we should take side, no, but we should be ready. Second question, I think, uh, ang tendency kasi niyan, kung nagmamahal yung, maalala po, nagmahal yung gasolina, ang tendency kasi ng ibang grupo, price control, no, uh, price regulation issue. And I think that's the last thing that we should do. Kasi in ang impact na ito, ang result nito, hindi naman sa atin ang galing eh. So, bakit masisisihin yung gasolinahan? Uh, hindi, hindi naman sila ang cost nito, okay? And mo naman pwedeng parasahan si, uh, ano, ang gawin, gumbay mo si Ukraine, uh, si, si Putin, sasali ka sa gira, hindi mo dapat gawin yung, I think that what, itong oil price hike, uh, I think it is temporary. Uh, it will not last long. Kasi ang tinitinan ko si dito yung US, like for instance, no, yung inflation rate ng US ng February 2022, last February, was only 7.9%. It's the highest inflation rate of America since 1982 or 40 years ago. Tapos itong November, meron silang midterm election. For now, among various surveys, the number one concern of Americans is inflation. No? Which means you have the highest inflation for the past 40 years. So mukhang matatalo yung mga Democrats sa this coming. Hindi ayaw nilang mangyari yun. Kaya ang gagawin nila, they, I think they will relax the sanction. Once they relax the sanction, I think the prices of oil, coal and wheat and many other products will also decline. Kaya yun ang abangan natin na i-relax nila yung sanction. Kaya for the meantime, tisyo na lang manguna natin ito kasi hindi po kasalanan yan ng mga gasolinahan, hindi po yung gasolinahan ng, ng Meralco, hindi kasalanan ng mga, pa, mga coal power plants. Bakit nagmahal ang kuryente, nagmahal ang gasolina? So tisyo na lang muna natin ito at hindi po ito magtatagal. Dr. Noy, I just... A uh, quick follow-up question. How long do you think this uh, whole thing will last? Um, I think for the, for the oil, I, I was expect I was actually expecting that the, the price of oil will decline maybe within by this week, no? Uh, uh, mukhang hindi, mukhang uh, kasi mukhang mukhang bibigay naman sana si Zelensky of, of Ukraine, but I think na pag may nakimay ng sasaw-saw dyan sa kanila, may nagpapatapang, Wag ka mag-surrender, wag ka magbigay na gano'n. O dito mahaba yung, mahaba yung, ano nila, yung kanilang ang negotiation sa kayong gera, no? But, but again, the shooting war affects mainly two countries. It's really the economic war that really affects us. Thank you so much. So, tingin ko mga hanggang, tingin ko April, April, April. Eh, unti, unti nang bababa ito. Kasi, umaaray na talaga ang mga Amerikano. Pag ginawa nila yun, lalong matipinalize talaga na yung bukas, baka mabugbog sila sa November election, baka maubo sila sa both in Congress and Senate. Interesting. Thank you, Sir Noy. So that means wait a few more months for our fellow Filipinos and all. It will yeah, one eventually go down. One or two months, one or two months, natin na natin ito. Thank you, Sir Noy. It will eventually go down. Good news for our drivers out there. Um, I want to pass this the same question to you, Sir Kev. Um, I we know we all we all know that international econ econ economics is uh, an important topic. You know? Pero for you, do you have a contrasting idea of how is it important for us to take sides in international conflict? And if we do, ano nga yung implications ito sa ating ekonomiya? Go ahead, Sir Kev. Okay, so when we actually take sides, um, 
Well, sige, let me go to the implications. No? So, number one is definitely it's a globalized world. We're talking about, um, we're, I mean, let me look at it in the perspective of, uh, um, I mean, some of our, I mean, raw materials. No? I mean, syempre, ang supply chains natin, especially when we develop products, looking at it, um, some of the raw materials are coming from China. And China, as we know, no, we know there's actually a relationship between Russia and China, no. So we can say that uh, definitely, no, um, uh, it will definitely affect our um, supply chain, lalo na kapag uh, yun nga, may forged China alliance, either of the two. Kasi meron talaga ano eh. Right now, okay. Speaking of taking sides, no. Um, admittedly, nan, ako personally, I'm in the neutral space. Kasi definitely, merong magka, merong, in terms of business, meron talagang maapektuhan in terms of yung supply chain. Um, and number two, of course, no, the, the, any, any, uh, anything, no, that will actually happen, no, even, even, uh, even though it's an isolated incident, no, yung, yung disturbance in terms of, uh, uh, let's say, sa, uh, when it comes to social media yan no kumaga yung digital yung yung market no coming from especially russia no coming from these countries kumaga ano yan eh magkakakreate yan ng uh, ng noise to the point na baka uh, ma, ma magiging limited na yung may english natin na market let's say okay kampi ka pala dito so we're not going to buy your products anymore etc no so this um the noise that the, the circumstance no will be creating no will actually make people take sides and when people take sides no syempre magkakaroon ng yun nga um kung from economic war to social media war that will cause uh, mar, uh, that will cause a concern in the marketing no of uh, certain kumaga ngayon pa nga lang sa election diba pag nagtake ka ng candidate side parang okay i mean medyo may ano na meron ka na meron ng concern towards sa magiging market mo. So, what more dun sa ganitong klaseng situation? Lalo na if your clients are from abroad. Yun. So, yun lang. Looking at it from that perspective. Yun. Thank you, Sir Noy, and thank you, Sir Kev. I, I think what we can agree on at this point is that this is very complicated stuff. Right? And uh, uh, I want to jump off from this topic and talk about um, local labor here in the Philippines. Uh, I'm sure we're tumaan tayo sa proseso ng pagiging empleyado. Uh, I'm a government worker myself. But uh, I also want to ask you, with everyone going back to the office due to loosen protocols right now, is working from home or is work from home arrangement still be accepted going forward? Go ahead, Sir Kera. Okay, work from home arrangement. Okay, so I'm look look at it no from the perspective of uh, industries that will be affected because definitely work from home will be uh will be okay for those uh let's say industries that are dependent on virtual uh, interaction. So let's say myself no in our office in our uh in our nonprofit no in field dev we are work from home because definitely when we are supporting startups no we don't have to meet physically we just have to coordinate with them no um directly but when we're talking about the uh, let's say the food industry um the real estate yeah. industry yan so yung real estate no um let's say ito no why people are uh, the bpo sector they are actually pushing na hindi dapat sa office na lang tayo magwork diba i mean merong pinupush na dapat by by april diba or ano pero yun nga eh umaalma doon yung real estate kasi paning renta sa buildings yeah, and so paano, uh, will they be sunk cost? Diba? So what will happen to them? How about uh, the construction industry? If we're not going to create new structures, given the fact that offices will rend be rendered useless, so will our homes be the new offices? Yeah. Pero in, to be fair, our internet no connectivity has increased. So in a way, yun yung naging o, kumaga okay naman pala na magkaroon ng virtual industry no na work from home but the problem is what about these related industries so yun lang so um yun lang no Mer kumaga meron lang talagang cons kapag hindi bumalik yung tao sa offices so meron talagang industry na maapektuhan but uh, yeah i mean possible pa naman pero yun nga will we compromise the other industries right yeah. interesting very very interesting sir Kev. i haven't really had the chance to look at it from your point of view I 
for me, it was just, hey, I think work from home is very, very doable going forward. Because we, we have been able to do it for two years. There's no reason for us to not be able to do it going forward, right? But there are other industries involved, like what you mentioned, the construction industry, the real estate uh, industry. These will go these will all go down the, the drain, right? <laughs> If we don't go back to work. So I guess it's relative to the sectors involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sir Noy, what are your thoughts on this also? Is working from home also something that you see going forward in uh, the sectors? And I It's really, it's better to to interact with people, no? and also for practical reason, na, because not all people have aircon in their house. Okay, mahirap pag kaba uh -huh. pag mainit, di naka electric pan nang so ikaw tikado ka na. Pangalawa uh -huh. yung laptop, ayoko ko nga pag hindi ako nag aircon, no? Mad madaling muminit, sa kama madaling magdepresyet yung laptop if it is not aircon. Wala sa sa pisina lahat yung naka aircon, so you put you you give ah uh, you give comfort to yourself, you give ah. Uh, You prolong the life of your gadget, your laptop, etc. And it's from time to time it's good to to sit uh, with people. Ah, uh, ito pa yung related to don sa question mo sa pag-elect ng leader. Not only that they have good economic grasp of the canons, but they should have good understanding of the Constitution, particularly the Bill of Rights. You know, the Constitution is above all laws, above all uh, list. Executive all above all Republic Act. Maski yung katulad ng IAT, gumawa, gawaan na sila ng sariling rules, hindi naman sila legislator. Para silang swapang sa power na ano. Kasi it's a Bill of Rights kasi. The Bill of Rights protect people from government. It 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 does government. There are some law, there are some project, some sector or some area that you cannot legislate. Okay, You cannot create an executive order. You cannot create an order. Kasi very sacred eh. Individual freedom and individual liberty is very sacred. Hindi yung tipong uh, oh, mag-create ka lang ng, oh, mayroong health crisis, may virus crisis, may climate crisis, and they will clamp down on your on your freedom to work, your freedom to be to to move around, your freedom to be productive. Government will just clamp down on you. Hindi ganun eh. I think we need candidates who have very, you know, hindi mo kailangan maging lawyer or maging economist, etc., Just to take it to heart, the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, very basic unit. Individual freedom should be, I think, should should be above so-called national freedom because ang ginagawa lang ng karamihan naman dyan, yung mga nag-impose, like, uh, ang tawag ko nga dyan sa lockdown is ano eh, based on science. It's 90% political science and military science and only 10% medical science. That is what they did. They practically kick out the constitution, the bill of rights, and just created their own laws. And it's ugly. That's why it's important that yung susunod na maupo sa atin, mula sa presidente hanggang sila doon, hanggang pati sa local government, hanggang sa barangay, may pagkaintindi, may respeto doon sa constitution. And hindi yung kung ano lang naisip nila na bawal, bawal, bawal dito, bawal doon, kami lang, kami lang yung hari-hari, di ba? Thank you, Ternoy. So let me just spell that clear for everyone watching us on YouTube, on Facebook, and those joining us here on Zoom. Mastery of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights by the heart is important for those who will be, will be electing on the May 9, 2022 elections. Correct, Ternoy? Got yes, that. Yes. And I hope everybody got that also. Um, uh, for everyone tuning in on us live. Sir Kev, do you have any two cents on that? Yes, no. So let me add no um the way we are structured as a country, no. We're talking about local governments. Na yes, may national government tayo, no. And but we have local governments that uh, that seeks to address no the needs of the respective communities no matter what culture. Kasi since we're an archipelagic country, no, and we have uh, I mean, ang perspective kasi natin we're We're archipelagic, we're also regionalistic in a way, you know, at this point, right. no, maraming may cultures in bawat region, even in governance, even the way we work, no? So in a way, no, if uh, we, it's very important, yun nga, going back dun sa sinabi ni Sir, no, na yung, yung Bill of Rights, no, na intindihan about kandidato, no? So, habang iniintindi nila yon, dapat yun nga nakikinig din, no? It's important for us to listen, no, to each one, lalo na pag national government position, kasi, We cannot treat everyone ano eh, no? 
in a similar way na o oh, ito lang ang policy na applicable sa iyo etc no so yung kumaga you have the foundation the bill of rights the knowledge of the constitution but there should be constant listening no um to the uh, lalo na yung DILG very critical um yung magiging um uh, how can they consolidate no yung um yung yung pamamahala ng local government so that you know we can really cater to people's needs no kung maga any infrastructure decision economic decision may kita natin na oh nga, no, this is truly ano we're trying to make uh, it attainable to them yan kung ano man yung services or decision na magagawa yon so yun lang so in a way kailangan meron pa ring um listening empathy um understanding of uh, the situation of the local yon so that's for the national and for the local naman no since tayo ang representante ng local important na let's say if may four day work week na ibababa no uh, kailangan ano um we are go i mean given a varied yung situation no ng local uh, we should continue to also listen uh, create policies that will help um that will harness no local resources local capabilities yan so yon so yun yung kailangan gawin ni local chief executive so yon so basically uh yun lang <laughs> the, the consideration lang yan for those who will be electing this election yeah that's for yeah thank you sir kev uh just to spell that clear again who should the national um government be listening to um and who should the local government be listening to so our audiences are clear on that okay So yung for the national no um of course no listen to our local chief executives yan as the representatives of uh, the different provinces and the local chief executives should listen to the people yan so hopefully kasi yung national ano yan eh yung lens niyan syempre um hindi naman niya makukuha lahat no mm-hmm. <laughs> kumaga si local chief executive nakababad sa community so important yung coordination dalawa hindi yung nag-iiba yung move ni mayor sa move ni ni national agency hopefully mas nagsi-sync pa yung dalawa yon Thank you, Sir Kevin. No? And uh, I just like to highlight that. Kaya napaka tinde na ang connection dapat ng ating local governments and national governments ay uh, matatag. At uh, kailangan uh, when you're you when you're involved in the national uh, national politics and nas- the national elections, you should be just as involved in your local elections as well. Because these people will spell out if it's a nay or a yay. <laughs> for us going forward tama po and uh, since you touched up on uh, touched on uh, the four day work week which is amazing because that's going to be my next question sir kev uh what are your thoughts on the four day work week and uh will the economy be affected um should we shift into uh, a calendar like that a work calendar like that okay uh four day work week um For me, the four-day work week, um, well, it should be, ba, ano, no? kailangan may balance tayo na hindi yung madidiscarry lang isang industriya na nagre-require ng more uh, labor. Kasi I can easily say na dapat output-oriented. No? I mean, give people to, give some time for people to recharge so that they can be productive, thus they can produce more outputs, thus uh, um, uh, pushing no, for mas magiging focus tayo in in nga, higher chance of growing the company because of productive uh, employees no pero kailangan balance lang na pag uh, let's say uh, pag four day work week hindi yung friday lahat walang pasok meaning for some it should be monday for some it should be friday yan so para naman i mean especially pag government <laughs> offices yan sarado tayo ng friday lahat so parang eh paano yung ibang ano um kumaga baka maging Uh, maging under capacity kumaga masyadong maraming magbubuk ng Monday to Thursday dahil hindi pala maraming magbubuk parang lahat ng services Monday to Thursday na lang well, eh, yung Friday potent, may potential to serve people pa nun so yun lang kumaga wag lang sabay-sabay ng isang araw and I think uh, we will be fine yun So, awesome. yung mat yung regards to yung ano yung for the work or whatever dapat hindi na kaya alam ng gobyerno at this are the same no? even not all sorry, companies in the same uh, industry are the same sir no sorry to put back on that i think you got cut off a little earlier uh, can you repeat what you said sir no 
Yeah, yung yeah, I susundan ko lang yung binanggit niya ni Kevin no, about the four day work week. Ang I think that gov- wag na makialam ang government mm-hmm. yan, no? Because uh, not all industries are the same and not even the same uh, com- companies within the same industry are not the same, no? If you look at the karinderya, wala silang ganun kasi bukas sila, wala silang break time, pagbukas ng umaga hanggang hapon kasi anytime may customer, no? Maski bibili ka nga lang ng mga cellphone Uh, para personal yeah hindi nagbe-break time yung mga tao diyan eh. because you, you, know, you never know when the when the customers will come in they're just they're ready kan hangga't pare hok makialam ang government diyan and um uh, b- before i forget pala mat no uh, ang sus- dapat talaga ng susun abangan natin ay yung anong sasabihin ng mga kandidato dun sa utang napakalaki talaga ng utang tingnan natin na la constant yung average na utang ng gobyerno in 2018 was about 60 8 billion pesos per month. Nang 2019, naging 73 billion pesos per month. Average. Okay, fine. Pagdating ng 2020, naging 208 billion pesos per month. Hindi per year, per month. 2020. By 2021, naging about 212 billion pesos per month. And this one, this one, about 200. Big debt means, or big borrowing means, big taxes that will be required. Ang, kwando, ang tanong dito, saan, saan, ano ang gagalawin, gagalawin ng next administration? Kasi ang, ang, ang danger kasi dyan, mataas na yung taxes, sa isang palimpat na dag na taxes. Like, for instance, yung isa sa proposal nga dito sa paano ibaba yung presyo ng gasolina is to, is to tinker with the train law. Kasi ang, ang tax kasi ng diesel dati is zero. Under the train law, naging 6 pesos per liter. Yung gasolina dati, uh, 6, uh, 4 pesos per liter, 4.30 per liter. Under the train law, naging 10 pesos per liter. So isa sa mga minumbob nga nila, minumong kahay, is to, is to temporarily uh, suspend the tax on oil, on, on, on diesel, gasoline, LPG, kerosene, etc. For the meantime, uh, mataas yung ano. But it's not, it's, you, don't do, you cannot simply do that because it, the, the tax is already in the... In, in, it's already, it's already a, it's a law, it's already a republic act. So ang, ang kwan talaga dito ay ang... Kung pwede, yung susunod, yung susunod na adaptasyon, bawasan talaga yung spending. Para bawasan naman nila yung pangungutang. Kasi yung, kung talaga dito ang problema talaga dito, patulad ng lockdown, maraming mga kumpanya nagsarahan, maraming tao walang trabaho. Pero sa gobyerno, ang sueldo nila mula sa national hanggang sa local, hanggang sa barangay, tuloy-tuloy. Ang kanilang allowances, tuloy-tuloy. Ang kanilang pension, ang kanilang, pension, ang kanilang uh, uh, representative allowances, tuloy-tuloy from national to to to, to barangay level. So doon pa lang talo na agad kaya medyo strict bisyo matapang sila mag-lockdown kasi hindi sila apektado. Hindi sila tuloy-tuloy ang sweldo nila, tuloy-tuloy ang allowance nila. Pati yung mga 13 foot like man pay, it's tuloy-tuloy. So bawasan ng spending at bawasan pangutang. Pangalawa, kung pwede ay mag-privatize na yung gobyerno. Hindi lahat ng paghihirap, ikukunin mo sa private sector, lalo pa sa mga SMEs sa mga entrepreneurs. Kunin nyo din sa gobyerno. Ang lawak ng lupa nyo, ibenta nyo ibang lupa. Okay? Uh, military camps, uh, state universities, uh, etc. No? Tapos ang ibang government corporation like kung mga pangkor. What is government doing in in gambling? What is government in gambling? No? Ano eh? So, I think uh, uh, it is an important uh, question for the, those running for president as well as those in Congress. Ano ang gagawin sa laki ng utang pag naupo kayo this coming July? Thank you, Pernoy. Um, gusto ko lang pong kaunting, kaunti pang ipaliwanag po ninyo yung inutang natin uh, sa buong administrasyon. Sir Noy, sa tingin niyo po ba nagamit po ng maayos yung inutang natin? Uh, was it used uh, efficiently, effectively? Dahil kung sa laki ba naman po ng inutang, uh, I think it's only right that uh, we feel it, lalo na yung mga grassroots at nandito sa mga na- nasa laylayan, tama po. So just very curious, Sir Noy, uh, do you think sa laki ng inutang natin, nagkamit po ba ito sa maayos? Pa- paano po? Paano? What's your question? Again, question? What was our debt, um, Sir Noy, utilized efficiently? Distributed no. in, to the masses? Yeah, yeah. May, may I think that a lot of the, a lot of the, 
uh, we're, we're simply wasted I think no ah uh, Kevin ito yung abangan niyo kasi yung target yata ng government yung digital transaction bukang hahabulin nila yung tax nila I think that we should uh, it is something that we should uh, I think we should, we should oppose it no may hindi pwede kaya nga ang point ko talaga doon Sir Noy, I think I think you got cut off, Sir Noy. Um, Sir Kev, while we wait for Sir Noy, why don't you go build up on what he said about digital transactions, also Karina, and how it affects your sector? Okay, digital transactions. Um, not all have. Uh, well, right now, no. Even though I mean, we're conducting due diligence in field dev, no, to actually um, uh, see if. They have uh, before we even admit no um, businesses to be incubated or accelerated in our programs, and uh, what we realize is there are uh, a lot of significant amount of documents that are still physical. I mean, and the perspective perspective right now, even in the government, is um, is when it's not physical, it's not true. I mean, it can, may may not be true. So, mm. umaga, ano eh, we cannot re really depend on. Um, uh, digital documents no so ganun din no pag digital transactions meaning ano yan eh may, may semblance pa rin na people are still adjusting no kumaga let's say tax collection will be digital i mean it will be nice pero we need digital um kumaga before we even digitize businesses or even digitize um operations no important to to ready people I mean, magkaroon ng digital readiness ang ating citizens and even local businesses. So maybe for for uh, from our candidates, no, this elections elections is very important. Uh, how can they? I mean, given this post pandemic reality, no, and given that uh, most transactions are going, uh, yun nga digital or communications, no. So how do they transition to that? And how do they? Ito, yun nga yung security. Yan, very important no? yung security ng data, yung security ng transactions. Yan. Kasi yun nga, nandun pa rin tayo sa phase na if it's not digital, if, uh, may, nag, mas naghahanap pa rin tayo ng physical proof for any uh, document uh, regist, uh, documents na ipoproduce ni business. Yan. Even in partnerships uh, with investors. Yan. Thank you, Sir Kev. Uh, Sir Noy, welcome back. Um, that's what we left on, Sir Noy, digital transactions. And, then ask, and I asked uh, Sir Kev uh, his thoughts on digital transactions and how it affects his sector. But let's uh, go back to you, Sir Noy. You were, uh, what, were, what were you saying, kanya, Sir Noy? Yeah, yung, uh, yung, yung point niya kay Kevin, I think that the uh, yeah, digital transaction has really helped a lot. No? And I think that... Uh, uh, when when government will will impose and maybe another tax on digital transactions, I think that that will adversely affect the sector. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I think ang susunod ang isang important siguro dito is that uh, uh, I, I'm 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 trying to anticipate where government will impose new taxes, and I think that it it may not be far fetched that the, instead of reducing the oil tax, energy tax, the government might even increase it. Sir Noy, do you think? Oh, I think Sir Noy got cut off again. But uh, very interesting thoughts, Sir pesos. Noy. Mahago nila fifteen pesos per liter, yeah, no? Oh. So, oh, there we go. So that's that's yeah, that's that's the danger, no? And and I think that uh, it is important that uh, yeah, that that the the that we should choose candidate that who are more um. Well, more sensitive to the needs, and I think energy, especially oil, is a very important commodity. Hello, Sir Noy. Yeah, Sir Sir Noy, I think you have a little bit of a technical problem on your My end. Internet is unstable. Hey. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Turn away digital transactions. Here we go. First example, right off the bat. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, Sir Kevin, Sir Noy, we are a little bit short on time. But I understand we have a lot more to say and uh, our audiences are thrilled to be hearing more from you. Unfortunately, we're a bit short on time. So uh, last question, I guess, would be as we draw near the elections, 
what should voters need to know more about, especially regarding businesses and the interconnection to the interconnection to the economy, and ensure that we move further into this post-pandemic recovery on a high note. Very, very brief answer from you, Sir Kevin. Okay, thanks, Do. Uh, business transactions, uh, business uh, inclusivity, meaning business, it, would, it should be easy for businesses to register. I mean, hindi man lahat ng tao no gifted to entrepreneurship, but it's not, it, we should create a space where people can try, can try to start a business, can prosper from it. Uh, number two is more of the sustainability of businesses because uh, right now, no, we're experiencing a lot of shocks, gasoline prices, even the pandemic, no. So, sana, no, no, uh, we can actually um, pro- uh, provide avenues of support for businesses, no, such as, uh, yung nga, perhaps tax incentives, uh, more of, uh, uh, siguro, funding, no. Uh, loans, avenue for loans, right. no, make it easy for them no, to access loans. Yan, business sustainability. And uh, lastly, yung um, uh, digital readiness no, for businesses. Kasi yun nga, it's another platform that we can harness. But of course, no, it, it's good that we can improve as well our internet connectivity. But still, no, uh, still a lot of businesses are going digital. No, so hopefully, may support si government na, ma, na, na to, to to make this industry prosper. Yan. Nabanggit nga kanina, wag nang taksan masyado. Uh-huh. Yan. Kasi ang daming supupun- papasok na businesses na internet-based. So, yun lang. Yun. Thank you, Sir Kev. Basically, this is enabling, no? Tama? Thank you, Sir Kev. And uh, very, very quick answer from you, Sir Noy. Um, a short sentence. What can we do to ensure that we move further into this post-pandemic economic recovery on a high note? Quick uh, answer from you, Sir Noy. Yes, uh, so I think uh, we should go back to brick and mortar economy, no? mm-hmm. especially food production. Because ano yan, like for instance, yung if if uh, if uh, corn prices will keep rising, then our poultry products will keep rising, you know, and 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 pork and meat and and many other things. So we just have to we have to go back to the. Pork. I think it's glamorous to do, you know, e-commerce, etc. And I think, but, but, but at the end of the day, we need physical goods, no? material goods, not just uh, intangibles, no? like uh, e-commerce. We need to produce more material, particularly food, construction materials, etc. that will release and help expand the supply of these physical goods, physical commodities that to help bring down the price. Kasi pag mo yung government, like, government will will give subsidies to to give to allow people to buy something that will only result in more borrowing and more taxes and more waste and even more more corruption eh? uh, the, the way to really beat uh, inflation is to really to stack up and keep expanding the material economy and that is really going back to the so called brick and mortar economy Thank you so much for your expertise, Sir Noy and Sir Kevin. I am honored to have moderated this panel this afternoon. That's all we have for today. Thank you so much for staying with us until the end. Personally, I've learned a lot. And uh, I hope our listeners on YouTube, on Facebook, and everywhere are uh, have learned a lot from this conversation. Now, we still have 52 days before the May 9 elections, which means... 52 days more to gather the right information to assess the candidates running for office. Vote Pilipinas has various ways that you can learn more about the upcoming 2022 national elections. Now, first off, head on to votepilipinas.com and check out the candidate profile dashboard for all the information you need about the candidates. And we are not stopping there. Make sure to stay tuned to the upcoming webinars in the upcoming few weeks with our two next with our with our two, next two webinars, hashtag bumoto ka para sa kamalayan webinar on March 25th, 2022 at 4 to 5 p.m. Hindi lang po yun. Catch the Pilipinas Debates 2022, the turning point this weekend, March 19 and 20, live online on TV and radio. Also mark April 3, April 23, and 24 on your calendars for the next round of Pilipinas Debates. Stay updated on the latest about the Vote Pilipinas activities as the Pilipinas debates, caravans, and more Joining by joining the Vibe with the Nation with Vote Pilipinas community channel on Viber. 
Ang gagawin lang po natin ay napaka-simple. Simply scan this QR code on the screen in front of you and join the community for a clean and safe election. You can also find Vote Pilipinas through various social media pages. On Facebook, just search for the verified Vote Pilipinas page on Instagram, Twitter, and follow us at Vote Pilipinas. Subscribe also to the official Vote Pilipinas YouTube channel and stay connected with us to be updated on the Vote Pilipinas campaign. As election day draws closer and closer, we as Filipinos have the responsibility to create changes in our society today. Sa daan ng kaayusan, maaari tayo na gumawa ng maputi para sa ating bansang Pilipinas. Hashtag bumoto ka para sa kabuhayan ngayong 2022 national elections. Hashtag bumoto ka this May 9, 2022. This has been Matt Matias. Maraming maraming salamat. Vote Pilipinas, tara kumilos at makialam. Vote